I started drawing and painting at a very young age. My my dad could draw really well, and we kind of practice drawing from the comics. And my grandmother was a was a painter. She actually painted uh, these amazing uh, landscapes, kind of the Southwest style with oil paints. And she painted hundreds of these things. And I would just sit there and like watch her build up the canvas and and paint this stuff. And it was just like this really impressionable. Uh, thing that I only realized in the last few years what it sort of really meant for me to be able to experience her creating this stuff and she always like encouraged me to paint and and taught me how to do it so there's like weird southwest style landscapes with barns and stuff and then I've added like a ninja turtle (laughs) or something (laughs) into it which I wish I still had some of those but anyway just to kind of like run through this so when none of my Oh, there we go. Oh, it wasn't working. A little animation. Oh, I grew up, and then I got into um, uh, the band program in school and started playing drums, and that kind of changed uh, my life a little bit because uh, I was fortunate enough to go to the school with incredible teachers and um, really, I don't know, that it was like this whole new world that opened up for me. And uh, in, in high school, there was an art teacher, so I was doing art and music, they were all, it was, my life was beautiful and I was happy until this one art teacher was like, you're going to have to choose between music and art. And he was real angry, just kidding. I don't know why I'm like, Ur. Um He was like, listen, I think it was like a class conflict where there was like a jazz band class and like an art class. It's like, actually, in life, you're going to have to choose someday if you want to do this or that. And I was like, no, that doesn't really sound too good to me. So I didn't take his class. Uh, I took the music class, but I knew that I was always going to do both. And from that moment on, it was kind of this, this pivotal moment where I was like, yeah, I could maybe be a better musician if I didn't practice art, or maybe I could be a better artist if I didn't practice music, but I can't stand to like the thought of not doing one of, you know, both of those. So, and that ended up being like a good, um, yeah, so I did music. It ended up being like a good, uh, idea because, even now, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about this anymore, I'll say it now, but even now in my work, my, my training as a musician, oops, um, has really like informed and helped my work today. There's like all these principles that are totally parallel. Um, so I went to music school, or I went to college as a music major, and then realized I didn't want to be a band director, so I switched back to... Uh, to art, which it was communication, I don't know what it was, kind of design, kind of art, like, um, and was a painting major. So I got back into painting, and I was learning all about the, the Fauve painters, and Cezanne, and Matisse, and just, like, digging into their, their like, brush strokes and the way that they, like, left underpainting, you know, all these colors kind of exposed. And I think that, in a way, reminded me of watching my grandmother paint and because I could see how they made it kind of like almost subconsciously, I think that's why I connected to that. So I was doing all these kind of crazy paintings, doing the same kind of thing where you're leaving, you know, these background colors and where like, and the point of that is to be able to understand how like I made the thing. And that's something that's important to me still. It's like, I love to leave remnants of like how a thing is made. So this is some a recent thing. You can still see that that sort of idea um, in in the painted stuff. But like going back, um, oops, my little drawing thing. So I decided to uh, get into graphic design in like my junior year of college um, because I was like, I need to learn the computer if I want to make a living in life uh, and not be a, a painter. Because how is how am I going to support myself in like my young or whatever? But design became this other sort of uh, outlet and scratched that same itch as music and, and painting did. And I was learning all this, this new stuff. And my, my design uh, projects from, from college are just the most awful things you could imagine, uh, which is how it should be, I think. There's some people, like especially in this town, that graduate from college and their work is like amazing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Because mine was just terrible. But anyway, so then with my brand new graphic design degree, I uh, hit the road with a, a band for a year and uh, playing country music uh, in Texas, which that's what you do if you're in Texas and you're a musician. You play country music. But um, 
So we did that for a while, and then I got this job at um, at SBC Telecommunication. It's now AT and T, and I was making proposal covers in the proposal center uh, for like three and a half years, and it was uh, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up like hitting this horrible plateau, and. They actually promoted me to like manage this team of like twelve other designers around the country who were all like forty and didn't care about anything. <laughs> and uh, they're like, "Make them better." I'm like, "I'm just twenty-four or whatever," and I didn't have anyone to show me, you know, what to do to get better. So I did the only thing that you can do at that point is expose yourself in public. <laughs> um, not really. That's a metaphor for showing your work <laughs> to people. So I went around town showing my book to art directors, trying to get advice. And I felt like I had to hit this like point of desperation before I could actually do that. Because I had this idea that all my work had to be like perfect and beautiful before I could show it to anyone. And that ended up being a mistake. Because when I started doing that, everyone started saying the same thing. You need to work on your type. And at that point, I was like, I don't know what you're even talking about. Am I picking the wrong font? You know, what does that mean? So then I went to this through this exploration of just trying to get better and taking advice from as many people as I could. And I found, even in this town, um, if you ask for help and advice for, from people, this industry is, on in general, very um, giving. You know, it's like if you if you want some advice from someone, just ask. You know, and then it's kind of a, this incredible. Because the worst thing that can happen is they don't like answer your email or something, which isn't that bad. The best thing that can happen is that you can get some great advice that propels you, you know, further and helps your work. So one art director told me this. I was like, I can't get a good job because I don't have experience. Blah blah blah. Um, oops. Oh, the reveal. Uh, pushed it. Ah. Fifteenth joke. Um, so. He said, do the work you want to do until someone starts paying you to do it. And my mind was blown. Um, and I, like at that point, didn't really understand what that meant. But I eventually um, came to realize that if I wanted to be, you know, doing concert posters or gig posters or something, I better start making them, you know, regardless of some, if someone's asking me to do it. I just got to, like, make the work that I want to make. So that's what I started doing in Dallas. I was working various jobs. Um, and sometimes things you try aren't great. Like I worked at a um, web design studio and I've discovered that I hate designing for the web. So I never want to do it ever again, even though there's like a lot of money in it. <laughs> you know, but I realized that that's not where my heart is. So I'm not going to go there. But I had to go and work there for a year to understand and realize that, you know. So um, anyway, so I'm in Dallas working at all these places and we, my wife and I, um, decided we were going to move to New York. So that's what we did. And, um, quickly got a job at an advertising agency called Spotco, which, um, if you're not familiar, they do, uh, mainly Broadway theater posters or an advertising, um, which is kind of like this really special place in this town because it's kind of the only thing like it in the world because the only place that there's Broadway theater is here. So to have like a whole advertising agency that revolves around this this thing is like really special. So I got to work with this this lovely woman, Gail Anderson, who is like still uh, a mentor and someone who's really special. That's me. My eventually, you know how you look like start to look like the person that you're around a lot. Yeah, you know, my hair started getting weird, and you know we started to look like each other. That's a wig. So we, I was there um, for you know three and a half years or something, and. This is the kind of kind of stuff that we did there, um, and working with Gail, she she is just all about um, making great typography. Um, so we would hire out and art direct the illustration or the uh, photography, but the type was always in our control, and it always had to be like amazing. So I spent a lot of years doing it wrong, <laughs> you know, and she would come up behind me, you know, it's like, what is that? It looks like you're designing type from the eighties. Why are you picking those fonts? I'm like, I do. It looks like the eighties. Oh no. So like, those were all like these learning experiences. Um, but it was great to be there. Uh, one thing that, 
that was great that was an amazing experience was putting together these comps for like the client meetings for um, to, to pick like a final direction. And I got really into making these things really, really tight. And the process of, of building something like this is felt to me just like painting, but it was a di like a digital form of, of it where you're still working with trying to make something look, look real, but not like realistic. It's like a kind of illustration, but it made, it made sense to me. It was just like this technical barrier of Photoshop or whatever that the more I practiced, the better I got. And the more I could kind of express what I wanted to the same way that I was able to with paint just from practicing for so many years. So that started to happen. Eventually, like a lot of the comps were so tight that the client just wanted that. So like for this, for this one, I just ended up doing the final illustration, which kind of never happens, but, uh, I was happy. <laughs> I was happy to do it. But, um, and then, you know, doing stuff like this, where really geeking out on making these, these letters look kind of like realistic and, um, figuring all that out, which if you look at this stuff that I was doing a long, a long time ago, it's still totally relevant to what I'm doing now. Um, and it's, it's because of working on these comps, you know, in this context, it's kind of weird. Oh, and, and also working there with um, the most incredible illustrators and uh, photographers in the industry, I learned how to be someone who's, who's good to work with as opposed to someone who's not good to work with. Uh, the example of that is this illustrator, Mark Stutzman, who we called constantly because he would, he would deliver like above and beyond every single time. And so that's, that's what I try to do now because I saw this example um, of people like Mark. So I, I would send him this horrible sketch of a drag queen sitting at a breakfast table with a newspaper and, and I'm like, can you draw this so that we can show the, oh yeah, the next morning I'd get this, <laughs> you know, and I'd just be like, <laughs> are you serious? You did not do that. Why would you spend so much time on like the tea kettle? <laughs> that's, that's so annoying. Insane. Anyway, so understanding that, like, that's how you that's how you do it. That's, like, that's how you work in this industry. Um, when someone asks you or hires you to do something, it's like that's the level that I'm trying to try to be at. Anyway, there too, Gail would get a bunch of um, editorial assignments and different things that she would kind of step out of her office and say, like. Uh, Somebody want to help me with this Metropolis cover? And I'd be like, yep, I do, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> you know? But then eventually over time, those things uh, became, you know, just getting the opportunity to do like a, a cover for a magazine was something I, at that point, never kind of really dreamed of, but then got to do that because of being there. I was also kind of exposed to this world of marquee lettering and neon and, and all this kind of stuff. This is all from the Vegas... Uh, Boneyard, I think it's called the Neon Museum now. If you've ever been there, it's like this magical place where all these huge signs are just laying in the dirt, um, and it's 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 crazy. Has anyone ever been there? It's it's in Vegas. It's like on the outskirts, out in the desert, and they've they used to just be out in this field, but now they've put walls around it and kind of propped them all up and there's like a little tour. So there's all these old historic signs that are just kind of sitting out there and to be able to walk up to the, these things is in the daytime, you know, is pretty incredible. Anyway, I could talk about that all night, but one of the first draft, first posters I did, I um, was kind of looking at all this stuff and I was like, Oh yeah, Broadway and neon lights and blah, 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 which is like the most cliche thing that you can do. Little did I know at that point, <laughs> you know. So I'm pitching an idea for a, a light bulb, like, sign. And then everyone's like, yeah, 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 that's been done, like, a million times. But uh, let's, let's do it, um, moron. So, like, but let's do it really, really well. So we farmed it out to, um, this was done by a guy named Rob Kolb, who is now a really good friend of mine who now owns a brewery. And I'm going to talk about him later. But... I got this back, and I uh, same thing. I was like, "Are you serious?" Looking at all the like little broken bulbs and and everything, so that got me thinking. Wow, I could really push this idea of digital painting and like building something that looks kind of realistic, but it's still an illustration. So I, you know, tried tried my own 
uh, for this thing a little while later. And then that has kind of like spun into this thing that I still do in this world of, of kind of this neon and, and marquee and light bulb uh, sign stuff and kind of trying to push it into something that could never really exist, <laughs> you know, but, um, so this is all more recent stuff, but just still like remembering that those, you know, that first poster and getting that, you know, and seeing, seeing the detail and, and having so much fun trying to geek out on all the little details and stuff that you would never really see. <laughs> but, uh, and then kind of even boiling it down to like a four color screen print or something, the same idea. What I found is out of context of Broadway, it's like really an, kind of an interesting uh, thing to do. So like on a magazine cover, it could be kind of cool. I also like to sneak my my wife's name into projects. So and so you, like so I pitched this idea of this sign, and the, so this is E G R my daughter's initials and A L L I S O N. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look close, it's like Allison is everywhere and all this stuff. It's pretty funny. I'm like, <laughs> hope nobody sees that. But uh, anyway, it's just like this stuff. I can I can work on this stuff all day. So as far as like dividing the things out into like pixel and pencil and paint, which I kind of think about those th things as three different things. At this point, it's still this is the digital kind of stuff that came from doing those comps from the advertising agency, and so that's what I would consider this stuff. And but as as you'll see, things start to over the last few years have started to kind of meld and be like all this one big thing. Um, sometimes the light bulbs aren't even attached to the letters. Anyway, reeling it in, going back. So before Spotco, um, this is the other thing, like transitioning into like the, the pencil idea. Before I moved to New York and went work at Spotco and started digging into this whole typography world, my sketchbook kind of looked like this. And then after, it started to look like this. You know, because I was learning so much about um, typography and lettering, it letters became a, a source for like making images and not just like as a, a design thing. It was using letters to create interesting images, um, if that makes any sense. So like the actual forms of the letters themselves told a story that kind of enhanced the meaning of what it was kind of saying this is all like really experience it's like it doesn't really matter if it was legible <laughs> you know I was just at home on Saturdays like doodling and drawing the stuff just trying experimenting and practicing which is an uh, idea that I learned from music you know I know and understood that I've got to practice to be able to get better and someone told me in when I was a music major he said if you sound amazing in your practice room you're not practicing right <laughs> you know so the idea of like just trying to be bold and brave and just try stuff even though it might not work, which I won't show that stuff, <laughs> but there's plenty of it. So I was doing all like this kind of crazy stuff and eventually it kind of started to focus in and my hand um, started to learn things and um, yeah, started trying to experiment with building out whole systems of, of letters that I could then play, you know, mess with and play with. Um, in different ways. So as all this stuff started to come together, the painting and learning about like marquee kind of signage and all this stuff about typography, things started to like happen. And then Gail, one day Gail got a, an opportunity to do an illustration for Good Magazine. And um, I hadn't touched a paintbrush in like six years um, because of working in design. And for some reason, something clicked and I decided to paint this phrase and I was up all night in our like first tiny tiny apartment <laughs> pulled out all of my little paints from college from the closet or whatever using like weights as like an eagle I don't know what's happening but um but painted this thing and it was just like I could have just sat there all night and painted it and uh something a, a love that I hadn't kind of tapped into in a long time started to mesh with this all the stuff I was learning so every chance I got from for a while, I was painting as much as I could. These were two practice pieces at home, 
you know, just that I would do on the weekend, just to try to keep learning and, and keep experimenting with this idea. These were two large, one of the two, two of the first large scale things that I had an opportunity to do for uh, Ace Hotel here in town, um, which is really great. So at this point, I'm at Spot Co. I'm starting to get more work on my own from the stuff that I'm kind of putting out there on the internet or whatever, and I'm starting to get hired. And those jobs are getting so frequent that I'm thinking about maybe I should just do this full time. And it kind of, this is kind of what it felt like. I'm like, oh no, health insurance, you know, um, which is a real problem. But, uh, <laughs> but something I realized was after I, I left was, man, I have my whole day to work on my own stuff. I can get a lot done, you know. Um, but I will say that working for, for people for those, however long it was, 10 years or something, you know, helped me to get to be able to do it. A lot of people just go directly out on their own, I think, these days, which is great for them. But for me and where in my own unique path, that's what I needed to do. So I don't really regret anything. But, um, oh, and this quote from this book, Stumbling on Happiness by Daniel Gilbert, is kind of interesting in the context of leaving your job or whatever, and these big life decisions. Uh, nine out of ten people expect to feel more regret when they foolishly switch stocks than when they foolishly fail to switch stocks because most people think they will regret foolish actions more than foolish inactions, but studies also show that nine out of ten people are wrong. Indeed, in the long run, people of every age and every walk of life seem to regret not having done things much more than they regret things they did, which is why the most popular regrets include not going to college, not grasping profitable business opportunities, and not spending enough time with family and friends. So I don't know, I love that quote because it's like, just step, you know, step out there if you're like interested in something. Um, and that might be kind of like this little takeaway. Every time I've done it, there's been this reward. And every time I haven't done it, it's been not great, you know? This is the first piece that I did after I left, this um, illustration for uppercase. And I remember, like, you know, and if you work in advertising, you know, it's like all the time. And you have like half an hour to finish this thing, get it out there. So I was like, I'm going to spend all week on this, you know, this one illustration. So I sat there for hours and hours and hours building this thing, and it was so like, gratifying and, and happy. And there's Allison. <laughs> but, um, uh, so, and, and this was the first uh, thing that I got the, in the type director's uh, annual, which is like, so, like such, this, uh, such a gratifying, I don't know, it was, it was like something, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I felt like I was going in the right direction, I guess. So that was like this dream up until that point to be in the type directors club <laughs> manual. So this is one of the early pieces where you're starting to see like drawn stuff with digital stuff and painted stuff kind of starting to see how I can like get these processes to, to work together. And like the drawn stuff started to look like painted stuff and things that I normally would do digitally, I started to paint. Um, and so it all kind of started mixing up and um, doing, this is like a 10 foot tall thing and this is like a little uh, digital thing, but trying to work with similar styles in different contexts and using different tools. And so then this, this uh, McDonald's project came up, which at that point was the craziest, it's still probably one of the craziest projects I've ever done, but basically an advertising agency, uh, DDB called, and they were like, we have this new uh, product called Spicy Chicken McBites for McDonald's, and we want you to do this mural. I was like, okay, mural, sweet, I love doing big stuff. That's great. Uh, like, so yeah, you'll be in a, a loft with your friends, and you'll take a bite of the Chicken McBite, and then you'll start, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you, so is this a, this is a commercial? Yes? Uh, you want me to be in the commercial? I'm like, yes. Like, I don't know about that. So anyway, I'm going to try not to ramble on. I could talk about this experience all night because it was so super weird for somebody who just sits down and, like, draws letters all day to be, like, in L.A. And, like, it was in a fancy hotel and, like, super, super weird. It was, like, the king, the king of McDonald's for, like, a few days. Anyway, this is, this, this is the commercial. 
Oh, we don't have sound. That's okay. So, if you do, you know. <laughs> you know, my friend, I just bet you. Oh, uh, that guy gave me this weird, like, blue pill right before we started filming, and I, like, totally took it. <laughs> It was probably weird. I had goosebumps all day. I don't know what it was. I mean, this is like a longer version of it, but I don't know. I've been going for. How am I doing? Wrap it up. There's like more on this. It was like all day. So I'd, I'd be trying to paint and they'd stop and like, okay, let's uh, dance around. I'm like, I, you said I had to finish this in like five hours. This whole thing. Yeah, yeah, let's dance. I'm like, uh. Okay. Good thing I took that weird blue pill. <laughs> so we're dancing. <laughs> we're now putting a bucket on my head. It's all happening. You get it. I'm gonna stop. Anyway, so so uh, so this interesting thing happened a few years ago, and it's I blame Nathan Fox, um, who's here graciously. Uh, he had. A Cintiq tablet in his office that you know he's been using. It's like not a big thing, and I was like, "What is that piece of machinery?" So he was explaining that you can draw. You know, it's like, well, you just you can draw on the monitor, and it's like this digital sort of drawing app, you know, piece of thing. And I was like, I don't understand. So I was really scared of it at first. Then I bought one, and then it totally changed my life because I got one. For the re for the purpose of like trying to, because he he said like it'll it'll help your efficiency, like your efficiency like go through the roof, like you'll you'll be able to get things done super fast. I was like, I'm into that, so I got one with like the purpose of doing like sketches, which these are sketches, early sketches that I did with with the Cintiq that I could send quickly, and it, it just helped me get ideas out really quick. But what it's ended up being is this that what that illustration was was. A computer, how I've done work on a computer, and how I've done work, sort of analog style with paint or, or actual drawing with with a pencil on paper. It's totally like gelled those two things together to where, um, you know, and that's the result of that cover, which was done the way that I've always done things. Um, but the sketch was done with the CNT. So then I started. Doing, oh, and this is just like this build of a, the process of figuring out a layout with a Cintiq. Because you can just draw like with a pencil, like I normally would with tracing paper, and just kind of like keep going with tracing paper. Except you're in Photoshop, and you can like draw a thing and then like scale it, and then turn the opacity down and then draw over it. And it's just like you can just get things out of your head super fast. So, you know, that turned into that, which was uh, that was all drawn and executed with this antique, that a pen never touched a piece of paper, and then that turned into a screen print, which is back there, I think. Oh, and I have some prints back there that you can just take whatever's left. But um, here's another example of that. Getting things like this done, this is like a, some wrapping paper, which would have taken so long if you tried to do it just with a piece of paper, but being able to zoom in and scale things and kind of shift things and keep drawing, but it's all authentically drawn with, with my hand, like the way that I've always drawn things. So it was like this seamless uh, sort of transition. So I can't say enough about it. I need to be like a spokesperson for Cintiq for like designers. It's comic, you know, like people that do illustration and comics and stuff are like, oh, it's no big deal. So anyway, the I'm showing all this because this my work seems to lend itself well to editorial because you know there's a lot of different directions that I can kind of take things, whether it's like this is more like photoshopped and painted and like uh, photoshopped all this stuff. And again, looking back at the Spotco experience helped me like be able to do, do stuff like this. And this was like um, a digital thing and that's all drawn. It's antique and this is like a mix of, of everything. And so it's like things starting to kind of build and, and mill together. This project, what are we doing? Doing okay. So this was a big mural that was kind of like a McDonald's thing, um, and I'll show you the video of this, but what the Cintiq helped me do here was to work out the composition super 
quick. So this is all, and for this one, I think I left some of the like under drawing or whatever. You can kind of see the the build of of the drawing, but but this is this is what that project ended up being. I think it's going to play. Yeah, and there's no music. I want to get pretty and dirty. That was me singing the music to this video. Oh no, that wasn't the video. That was a that was a piece of the video. That was a security guard that was sitting there watching me the a whole day draw. She's like, "Come on, let's get in front of the camera for a second. And I was like, "Dink," and that made it into the video. Is this gonna work? Mm -hmm. No, it's not gonna work. Anyway, so I'm painting back there, and then, of course, at the exact moment that the camera flashes, I close my eyes, <laughs> like I do for every single picture. <laughs> Moron. Uh, well, we'll skip that one. We will. Um, so along those same lines, like I'm, kind of the point of talking about this is super recent stuff. This is last fall. I'm getting these projects now that um, it all all of this work of like digging into like doing these weird digital things and trying to draw stuff and paint stuff and now it's all kind of like becoming one thing now people kind of understand that and now I'm getting hired to do jobs that because people want like a range of different kind of style not necessarily styles but executed in like these different ways an example of that is this right and I'm doing like this these a lot of animation kind of projects but so so this was, I mean, it's all drawn, but it's so easy with the digital digital drawing to be able to animate it, too. So they wanted that animation done. Oh, and this is just a, a screen capture of, of my process of working in the Cintiq, of doing this other final piece, um, which I think is slightly interesting. But so you can see how it's, you can like, quickly figure out, like I did like seven different ideas for the top, you know, real quick. And I was just able to delete it and try it again and try it again, which normally before that would have taken me a long, long time, but just to be able to get it out there. And what you're able to do is just get this like crazy amount of detail because you're drawing everything just directly onto the piece where before I would have done each of those things on a separate piece of tra tracing paper and then scan that in and so it saves a lot of time, and I still think it's really authentically analog looking because it is all everything is made really with my hand. So that's that's that piece, and then we did a whole slew of other things. Oh, another thing. Got to sneak him in. So the. The cool thing about this is the guitar case, that's all just painted. So that's paint. And everything else is, you know, is drawn, but it still is retains the same, like, uh, cohesiveness. So that's kind of like what's happening right now with this stuff, which is cool. Um, this project for Ray-Ban, kind of the same thing. They wanted um, this. I pitched this, and they were cool with it. Then they wanted this huge sign for the store. That was kind of in that same style. And then they wanted to do a bunch of social media things, but all different styles. So there's painted stuff and <clears throat> digital stuff. I love these kinds of projects because like working with on one campaign and like all these different styles just like makes so much sense to me. Um, and this is kind of I'm wrapping up. Oh, I have a lot. Oh, okay. But this <laughs> this is a, a project for Wells Fargo. Um, and this is kind of like the antithesis of that idea where they they wanted this series of animated kind of phrases over these uh, photographs, but they wanted them all to look like a, almost like a different person made it. But it all still like looks like it's part of one campaign. This was so fun. It's like, okay, let's go to the next one. What do we want to do? We want to paint this one? We want to do something? You know? So this was really fun. Oh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna skip this. I worked on this restaurant with some friends, and it was really fun. And here's some slides about it. There it is, amazing. Dana Tanamachi, who a lot of you might know her work, 
It was one of the friends that was there, um, Ryan Fuhrer. The cool, okay, I will say the cool thing about Ryan, my friend, who's this incredible designer and illustrator, moved to Texas, and he always said, I want to open a restaurant. I was like, yeah, right, you're just a designer and illustrator. Why would you even say that? But then he opened the restaurant. It's like incredible because it's it was only after he explained he's like well f food experience it's all design like it's all this experience is designed you know and um it's not just like a a thing that you look at it's an experience that you can taste and be in you know i was like whoa you just blew my mind it's awesome so he he's he inspired it's good to surround yourself with people who inspire you <laughs> makes you get better Okay, so Spotco moved offices um, a couple years ago, and Drew, who's pictured here, um, called me and asked me to do a, some you know, installation for the new office. Which I was like, oh, what an honor, you know? So I'm like, it's got to be crazy. It's got to be like this crazy thing. So I wanted to do this sign thing because I was like, well, it's Broadway. I got to do like a big light bulb sign and do it huge because it's like so cliche but you gotta i gotta just do it um but i'm gonna actually build a sign so we worked out these you know this and this is what i sent i was like something like this he was like great do it so i was like okay so i got my brother-in-law slash friend um <laughs> who's an incredible carpenter to um build so i i drew the sign out and the idea was to build a sign that was based on a drawing of a sign so it was built to look like it was in perspective. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell in the pictures, but it's all, you know, he was brilliant in kind of building these, building these letters and kind of figuring this thing out was so fun. And he cut all these pieces out. <clears throat> so those are all flat pieces, but they're painted to look like they're dimensional. So this just gets into like a whole new thing. So now I'm like asking myself, what do I, what's, what's like the next progression of, of this work? And I think it's like talking about the restaurant stuff and, and like making something tangible or something that's actually like a real object. Cause I, most of my, a lot of my, um, lettering work is all like dimensional type. So I'm like, well, what if it was actually like a, a, a dimensional letter in space or real sign or something so that's what i've been kind of thinking about and trying to do so all these letters they're actually built but i painted them just like i would if they were flat so i painted the light around the lights you know and uh like trump roy isn't that the term for that style yeah my art vocabulary so that's that's us installing the thing and man what a fun project. I love collaborating with people too. That's another thing I learned from music is like, you can't be in a band unless there's other people, you know, and that's playing solo is cool, but playing collectively with and creating something as like a group is where it's at. So, so awesome. So here's like this piece. I'm trying to go fast. Oh, Rob Cole, who made the sign at the beginning, who I mentioned, um, who made that big light bulb sign owns a brewery. He came to me and, um, was like, we're opening this brewery, and can you do the branding and the labels? And I said, yes. He said, we don't have any money. I said, okay, can you give me beer? He said, yes. How much? I said, as much as I want for my whole life. He said, yes. <laughs> so I did it. And it's a little bit tricky because, you know, everybody has your friend who's like, oh, it's beer. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah, that is so good. But, uh. They actually, it's the best beer you'll ever drink in your whole life. So this is just like a quick page of like exploration. We were trying to figure this stuff out. And then I came across these old, um, oops, QSL radio cards from like the like 30s and 40s. So ham radio operators would each make these cards and send as like a um, confirmation of their transmission to whoever they, and they would write these handwritten notes and they were all like letter pressed and they're all different, but they're all like so the same. So I was like, this is the perfect inspiration for these labels because each of their beers, they're like these mad scientists about it. And they have all this information that they need to put on each label. 
So that's the system that we came up with was based on the radio cards, which is so perfect because their name is transmitter um, brewing. So this has been, I'm still working on labels. It's just like constantly I go and they give me beer and then I go and work on labels and then I go and get beer and then I work on labels. It's so good. Anyway, so that's, that's a really great. And this is so different for me because this stuff isn't really drawn, you know, but it like solves this problem and it like was a project that was about solving a design problem, which is also super fun. Just got to figure out <coughs> what's next. I kind of talked about that already. That was made with a Cintiq. That's not a painting, which is like, will blow my mind. Like the more I practice with it and like figure things out and people make these crazy brushes that look so real and I'm just painting, I'm just making this thing the way, exactly the way that I would with real paint. And there's nothing like painting with real paint. Like you got to do that. But to be able to like work something out like this and have it look really, really real is so fun. And anyway, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But if you have any questions or anything. So how sick were you from the chicken nuggets? <laughs> <laughs> people, people always ask me, how many chicken nuggets did you have to eat? And my answer is, I ate three <laughs> until somebody was like, oh, you know, you don't have to eat those, right? I was like, oh, what? Why? Uh, there's a person with a bucket and just have them come over and you can spit the chicken in the bucket. <laughs> I was like, I have to spit this in a bucket? Okay. You're like, action. Cut. <laughs> Literally in my face with the bucket. <laughs> it was weird. So that the whole rest of the day was spitting chicken nuggets out into a bucket. <laughs> it was not, and not painting, which was so stressful. It's like, guys, I can't spit any more chicken out. Got to paint. Anyway, talking about chicken nuggets all day. Also, there's the beer that the radio. Yeah. Cards. So they, you know, that's their. They define each label as like the F1. They give the, you know, the, the yeah. Those words they give to you, and then you. Yeah, exactly. So, like the saison is the S, and there's S one, two, three, four, depending on like the yeast strand and all this different things. So each one has like a, a different kind of description and all of the, I don't even know what this like. There's I, the IBUs and the temperature and all this stuff, which is like such a fun problem to try to solve. But with that inspiration, it was just like, kind of makes it easier. But now the trick is trying to make ones that are different because I feel like I've done all of the tricks that I can do. <laughs> well, so now we're doing an experimental series. We're really going to try to geek out on like printing and making it like really modern looking. The same sort of like stacked and layered type, but have it be real modern and like these crazy maybe italics or something, which could be fun. Anyway, I blab on. Sorry, I should probably show fewer projects and. Talk more about it. No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I'll be around if you want. Oh, yeah. So when you first started doing the lead ring, were you using a lot of reference material? You could use less now, or like how much reference do you use that's, to figure out your lead points? That's a good question. I feel like at first I didn't like know what I was really doing. So I was just kind of like, like I said before, letters were a source of like inspiration for making images. Like I wasn't looking back at historical like re type reference and trying to make it right. I was just, which I think was like a kind of a coincidence that was good for me because it helped me just be real like loose about it and not be like so perfect, which that's like, I have so much respect for people who, you know, do that and, and know all the history and everything, which I've kind of, I've dug into over the years and, <laughs> the work starts to look more like that. But I sometimes try to get back to just trying to forget everything and just try to like express something with, mm -hmm. with the letter forms, you know? 
it's kind of hard to do once you know like what an R is supposed to look like, you know, but then it's like breaking the rules without breaking them and that whole line, which is, again is like 100% related to music and improvisation. It's like doing things that are wrong, but that still work in the, in the song or in the, like the moment or whatever. But, yeah. uh, drums. So like percussion and rhythm and like it all, in my mind, it's like the same thing. You know, all the principles that make good music good are the same things that make good typography good. You know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I agree. Sure. I think you're right, Joe. <laughs> Joe's drummer too. We didn't, didn't tell. Anyway. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Because I do, I just yeah, I never know like what, how it's perceived, you know. Because it kind of like naturally gets out there, some and sometimes in ways that aren't really you know don't do like consciously or something. But like I learned early on playing music that it's not cool to play to use all your tricks, you know, and to play as many notes as you possibly can. Because then you just sound like a a wanker, <laughs> you know. You gotta like hold back and be, um, you know, tasteful. And that's totally true. With you see all these, you know, hand letterers now who do this swirly, like crazy, and it's like beautiful. A lot of it, some of it, um, but sometimes I'm just like, just like take it easy. <laughs> yeah, you can do that like crazy stuff, but. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have my opinions about that, so I'll stop. <laughs> anyway, I'll be around if you want to chat. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you so much for coming out.